we are required to draw the graph of that hyperbola. Now this hyperbola will have the name if. That's the name of this graph. The, the if doesn't stand for function, it's the name of the function. That's why there could also be a G or an H or a P or anything for that matter. The X tells us that the input variable for the function is the same as there it is called X. Now the easiest way to draw a graph such as this, if you don't know exactly what it's going to look like, would be to compile a table such as that and you choose a couple of e X values or input values. So let's for instance start with saying minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2 and then we feed them into the function respectively. So the minus 2 into X in the first place will give us a 0 below the line. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0. So that won't be possible. It doesn't have a value. Minus 1 will give us 2 over minus 1 plus 2 will give us 1. So it's 2 over 1 is 2. When x is equal to 0, we'll have 2 divided by 2 is 1. When x is equal to 1, we'll have 2 divided by 3, which is 2 thirds. And when x is equal to 2, we'll have 2 over 4, or we will have a half. So just taking a look at those values then, and drawing an axis diagram for ourselves, let's see what we can come up with. So we've got 0 there, 1, 2, minus 1, and minus 2 on the x-axis. Those are the input values, and in each case our y values at minus 2 actually was non-existent. So at minus 2 we've got an asymptote because it, it, it doesn't exist, a y value in that point. At minus 1 we had 2, so let's make a dot there. At 0 we had 1. At 1 we had 2 thirds. At 2 we had a half. So we can start seeing approximately what the shape of this graph will be. It will never touch that dotted line and it will just keep on coming down that way. So that should be part of the graph. Now there should also be another half to the graph which might lie on this side. How would you find the shape of that graph? Well simple enough, you choose some more x values to the left of minus 2. So you're going to choose minus 3, minus 4, minus 5 if you like. Um, you can even go way out, go to minus 10 for instance to see what is the value you get and the same to the right hand side. Let's take 10 in there. So if we have 2 divided by 10 plus 2, we've got 2 divided by 12 or 1 over 6. It still doesn't go below 0. The fraction becomes a lot smaller, which substantiates that claim that that line will just keep on getting closer and closer to the x-axis, but it will never go through the x-axis, no matter how high the x-value is that you want to choose. And the same will go for the left-hand side of the graph. Keep on choosing values as many as you like until you're happy with the dots that you've made, uh, which will then give you the shape of the graph, and you can just simply connect them with a freehand uh, drawing motion. With your pen, you can connect all those dots, and you've got the graph drawn. And then just a little bit theory, we said that the dotted line is called the asymptote. Now the reason it's called an asymptote is because the graph, neither of the two halves of the graph will ever touch that dotted line, and none, no part of the graph will ever touch the x-axis, so the x-axis itself, or then the line y is equal to zero, would also be an asymptote, and the dotted line will call x is equal to minus two. So that and that would be the equations of the two asymptotes of the graph of f.